Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to game one of the Pidgeotto stall. <clears throat> so, as I said in the deck profile, I had to record um, these games, like some of these games were done early, before I made the deck profile, some of them were after. Uh, and a lot of them I didn't get to, um, you know, do my vo uh, voiceover because I was either doing something else or was super tired uh, and needed to play the game. And this deck needs a little bit of more focus to play. Um, so I'm just going to be doing the overlays for the best games out of those for you guys. Uh, with that being said, let's get started with game one here. We are playing into the Mew Box. So I'm trying to turn one uh, for a Professor Elms here. Unfortunately, we don't we don't get it like through the Poke Gear, so uh, we do end up with it there, uh, which is pretty nice. But we don't get to use it this turn, so um, then we end up with a third now. But Custom Catcher because we don't need a third. Ditch one Elms early. We have two in our hand. We should be good. I didn't know I was playing into Mew Box until like I saw this because it could have been Dark Box too. But as soon as I saw this old Galio, and then like I know he has a Mew Box thing, but then you could just have like I have a Mew Box <laughs> icon, but mine's Pidgeotto stall. So um, but yeah, so Mew Mew it is. I like the new promo Mew Mew. It looks like Mew's just having fun in that picture, and Mewtwo is like irritated, grumpy. Um, really suits their characters. I don't know why we went off screen here for a bit. Okay, so we got into the Elms. Pidgeotto, Pidgey Pidgey. Uh, he got the Latios out, but that doesn't really matter for for us. And then we are going to evolve one Pidgeotto, so that's why I went for that. We got Custom Catcher. Double Custom Catcher is nice. I, I think I held on to it. I don't know if I used it yet, to be honest. This is honestly one of the longer games, cause like it was it was whether he could get this Mew Mew set up and start like knocking out Pidgeotos and whatnot. Um Like even the Articuno knockout followed by a Pidgeotto knockout would be dreadful for us, because we can't we can't really afford that with this deck. It's all about prize cards stalling it to the last moment, but luckily he didn't get like energies early here, which gave us like an extra turn, which is Pretty cool. I played the Oranguru out. Um, I developed more expertise with this deck as as I kept playing the games. As, as you know, as it should be, the more you practice, the more you get perfect. So um, yeah, there are some decisions that I would have made otherwise, but pretty much won most of the games. Uh, I think we only really lost like two, to be honest, out of all the all the ten games we played. Uh, and then there were a lot of games where people were just surrendering in like three or four turns. Because uh, the stall hit them so hard, then they just they were like, nope, this is not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those decks. It is one of those decks. And I've already said uh, it's a budget deck too. Like the only expensive card I can really think of in this is like the Articuno maybe. Um, everything else, you should have them already. There's no Jirachis, there's nothing else in here. Uh, it's a budget deck, pretty cost efficient and really, really game efficient. Uh, the only thing is, you are going to be in for long games if you're playing this deck, so I uh, have at least 20 minutes, 25 minutes to commit to each game, uh, unless you can scare your opponent, like turn 3, and just get them to surrender. So uh, we set up the Articuno here uh, for Cold Crush in case uh, he decided to get energies onto his guy. We're also running the Crushing Hammer. He needs a switch uh, in order to be able to get his Hoopa out of there. He got the Viridian, so I was like, wait, this is nice. I can get energies too if I have them in my deck. So he does put it on the Hoopa, because we have like a lot of Pokemon with abilities, so he's going to do a bunch of damage to us. So unfortunately we only had the one energy. If we had one more water energy, it would have been super useful. We would have been able to one-shot this Hoopa. Um, but we didn't, so the Hoopa does do um, quite a bit of damage. To us, to be honest. Mm. 
kind of like considering what to do here. So I custom catcher for his Espeon Deoxys here, because that's like, I feel like that's the Pokemon he's least going to want to invest energies onto in this deck. Um, so he's definitely going to have to retreat him out and also get his Hoopa back into play if he wants to do damage. Kind of what I went for there. Uh, and then I'm grabbing another custom catcher in, in case he gets his Hoopa back out somehow. Um, maybe we can get that, maybe we don't, but it's, you know, you, know, you could try, because once you thin your deck out, the chances of us getting those are more likely. Especially because if we Orangaroo those back in, it gets easier. We did get the Recycle Energy, which is nice, so um, we do get the Ice Wing. Unfortunately, um, I think maybe here, like here, I should have Pidgeotto first before I Custom Catchered. Um, no, 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 I did the right thing. I did the right thing, because um, we can't attach two energies this turn. That's why. That is why. Because he would have he would have killed us with the Hoopa if he got another energy. That's why he got some Gatcher. But, yeah, so it forced him to burn another Cynthia here. Uh, get his deck back. I don't remember if he got the switch. I don't think he did this turn. Uh, and now he starts investing on the Mew Mew. Because he has Pokemon in his discard, and the Mew Mew could be super useful for him. He could have gone like and put it on the Hoopa too, because <clears throat> he's definitely looking for the switch. Uh, he's not looking to retreat this Espeon Deoxys because he's energy uh, dry right now, until um, he gets like another Viridian or something. So we did draw into a cu Crushing Hammer, uh, which was nice, which was super nice. And a Tate and Liza. I think I could have switched out here. Um, I don't know if I did or not. I think I went for damage. <laughs> I was like, if two turns I can get three cards uh, right off the bat here. Maybe get some good items in there or something, but that was the aim. Uh, we got a Tails on that Crushing Hammer, unfortunately. But then I was like, okay, what can I give him to make his hand like as stale as possible? So supporter cards would have helped him. Uh, Lily and Cynthia both would have helped him draw. So I was like, okay, I'll give you an energy. Uh, hopefully, I can get another crushing hammer to knock it off you. Oh yeah, the reason I didn't switch here uh, with Titan Liza is because we have to like manually retreat the Articuno uh, for us to be able to put the Recycle Energy back onto Oranguru to attack, uh, or else we can't use uh, Resource Management, which is what we need Oranguru for. But honestly, I think I should have just gone for a Resource Management turn here. Um, but I go for Ice Wing, because I'm greedy and I want to get that damage off. <clears throat> I was hoping I could stall for one more turn without a switch, and then I'd like get the three prize cards basically. Was the goal here? Because I know I gave him uh, Rainbow Energy, right? So... Yeah, so the plan does work. We do get the Espeon Deoxys, which I'm happy about. Um, but I don't know if it's like long-term critical for us. Uh, we do run into another crushing hammer. Boy, these can be so annoying, um, especially if you're not playing a Walder deck, uh, or if you can't draw into Walders or something. It could be super annoying. Double crushing hammer, uh, and another switch. But I think I go for Palpad here because we already have one. All right, here it is. Palpad for Mars, and like, I don't know what else to take, so I grab Cynthia, because we don't need the Elms anymore. Our, our setup is done, so not necessary. And then obviously we're gonna go for the Crushing Hammer here. Uh, we're not gonna stamp him and give him more cards. Unfortunately, one of them goes Tails, the other one goes Heads, and uh, I decided to ditch his Rainbow Energy. I'm just keeping with Psychic, because that really limits his options. Excuse me. Honestly, he should have put the Psychic Energy on Hoopa <laughs> and just had him attack earlier because like I can't do anything to stop the Hoopa from attacking us if he has two energies in play. Especially if those crushing uh, hammers come out. Uh, Tails. 
chip chip Isaac here for us next turn, which is really nice. Let's move forward. So he does get the Hoopa and the energy out once we um, take out the Espeon Deoxys, so we basically traded three prize cards for two. It's more worth for him because he's actually going to have a chance to get rid of our prize cards, whereas we're not. Because uh, Orangaroo is probably never going to get to attack like with 300 views. It's super rare. And even if he did, 60 damage isn't going to net you a lot <laughs> uh, in this meta. So we basically go for the resource management here. Um, we chip chip away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll show you the chip chip. My bad. <clears throat> so I decided to give him another Hoopa here. Because I know his bench is full, and then we go for Brock's Grit for energies in the cards. Um, Pidgeot our way into an energy. I'm looking to get three onto him. Uh, he gets his Hoopa out again. Hits us for 90 this time. So this Orangaroo is gone next turn. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm skipping ahead, guys. It's a super long game. I don't want you guys to have to sit through this. Um, so we do get the Crushing Hammer. We do get the heads, so we discard, that buys us another turn. Uh, tails on this one, and then we go for resource management, get those crushing hammers back. Uh, and this is where the stall uh, really gets complete here. We're like thinned our deck out to a good extent. We're able to get the cards that we need, and I also want a custom catcher, like one of his um, more like energy intensive Pokemon basically, uh, out here and then make sure they don't retreat is the goal, so that's why I put it back in the other custom catcher. And then two crushing hammers so we can keep up the um, the annoying uh, attack combo basically and just get, keep keep getting rid of his uh, energies. So he is out of energies, but he pulls off the tag switch here uh, onto the Hoopa, which does get rid of our Orangaroo. So we give up an Orangaroo, and then we give up Giraffe before we get to the next Orangaroo, so it's kind of uh, kind of lame, but yeah. Don't worry if you lose prize cards in this deck. Uh, all that matters is having at least one prize card so you're still in the game uh, and being able to stall your opponent out. We draw in another Orangaroo here. I put him on the bench. Uh, I'm like, what can I do that's useful here? His deck is super thinned out as well. So um, we're looking to really complete the stall here. Because he had to draw and draw and draw and draw to get the resources uh, to stay uh, viable in this game, right? Because he needs to attack. I need to keep him from attacking. And we're both trying to, uh, trying to do our jobs uh, as best as possible here. We're tied on prize cards, so Surge isn't really of much help to me here, but... I uh, decided to grab him anyway, because if, in case we lose Giraffe, we wouldn't use him next turn. Was the goal. So uh, Orangaroo can survive, basically, is why we put him out there. He can survive one Hoopa hit. Um, and our opponent's running pretty low, so we're just looking to stall further here. Um, I don't know if I reset stamp him here. I don't know how many cards he had. We would have seen it in the end game hover, but we'll see it here. So he gets his Mew Mew out, <laughs> honestly, I don't know if he, he t I think he takes out our um, Orangaroo here, so we don't get our resource management turn on him, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because I was expecting to do that and get some of those um, uh, resources back in our deck, like the uh, Crushing Hammers and stuff, but uh, he does get a Servo Strike off. Uh, also gets energies onto his second Mew Mew. Okay, so he had five cards. We, we did see it on the hover. So I'm like, okay, two cards left. You could take Giraffe Rig. I need to make you draw. Um, so... I go Surge here. So 
So we get one crushing camera, which is really, really good for us. Uh, we get rid of this. Then I'm also looking for the custom catcher here. I was considering it, but then I was like, wait. So we get the Articuno out. I'm really hoping to like further mess him up here. Uh, one custom catcher is all we need to like stall him further and uh, uh, getting almost done with his hand pretty much. And we get another crushing hammer here, which is super nice. So now you can see the stall fully complete guys, like he's pretty much done so here. Uh, we draw into another crushing hammer. Don't know how many heads we get here, but we basically make this Mew Mew useless. Uh, and then I think we take the other one off though. If we, I don't, I don't know if we get it. Yeah, I could have also done one energy on each Mew Mew. Um, that would have also worked, but then he would have, if he got one energy, one Mew Mew would have been back up. I guess one Mew Mew is still up this way too. Um, either way. I don't think we GX, so yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, I could cold crush eventually or something. But uh, the game's almost up here, so you can't have that many resources left, is the confidence. Yeah, so if he brought out his Mew Mew, we would cold crush him, this is the goal. But there's three retreat costs on this guy, that's why we brought him out. Uh, and he needs the energies to even attack, so. Pretty sure he's not going to be running fighting energies in here. I think he was looking for like a rainbow or something so he could do revenge or something. I don't know. We were never going to knock out a Pokemon. We got the one because we got lucky, but it rarely ever happens in this deck, guys. Don't count on taking uh, your own prize cards because that's the really a rarity. Things have to be like perfect for that to happen. So he does get the Mew Mew energized here, but he probably doesn't have a way to switch him out. Um, any lilies here, which is like the fatal error he made. And I'm like, well played, coach. Um, that's gonna cost you. Because pretty much had to draw into a switch this turn. Um, and if he did, then he would have been able to kill my Articuno. And that's it. Uh, he gets two prize cards, he wins. But um, I think the only thing I could have done better there is instead of... Because uh, when I had hoped to get the custom catcher, so instead of uh, doing two energies off that Mew Mew, I could have done 1-1 one, one, and then prevented him from having an attack strong enough to um, kill Articuno. So that would have been a 100% safe play. So one minute error, but I think this was one of my earlier games, so I was still figuring it out there. Um, but yep, <clears throat> that is game one of Pidgeotto Stall for you. Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter what we do. Uh, he is just going to draw and lose. So... I'm just messing around at this point, seeing what else we can get in this deck. If we reset stamp him, that gives him another turn. Uh, so that's probably not the best idea. Now we use Cold Crush. <laughs> just, just to burn a little bit more. Um, but that's the game, guys. Uh, with... Uh, Pidgeotto Stall, Isaiah Williams, uh, World 2019, 8th place deck, super awesome, super fun, and uh, super consistent. So, this is a fun deck, guys, and it's a budget deck. Try it out. Let's get into game two here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game two of uh, the Pidgeotto Stall uh, deck. This deck won 8th place, from World's TCGO. Uh, said that already, but I'm just putting it out there. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this is a stall deck. The objective of the deck is to make your opponent uh, draw out as many cards as possible. We already did the deep deck analysis of this, uh, and it reflects pretty well into our games. Um, the games we lost, as I said, were because of not being able to get lecture, uh, Elm's Lecture in time and things like that. Um, the, but only two games in, out of like ten, so it's pretty consistent, I would have to say. Uh, most of the times you end up with what we want, uh, and this is a game to show you uh, how we can win in an offhand too, because honestly we don't get really anything we need in this, but we still get a quick win uh, <laughs> by frustrating our opponent uh, here. I'll show you how this goes. It's a fairy deck we're playing into, Guardian.
So, Guardian starting with Fairy Charm ability. The objective of Guardian is to get at least 3 energies on the board so they can use Kaleidostorm and rotate those energies around. Uh, eventually aim for the 6 energy mark where they Magical Miracle and then shuffle our entire hand back into our deck. So, our aim is to not let him get 3 energies uh, on any of the Guardians and we're going to try to do that with our Crushing Hammers. Uh, and we succeed! Spoiler alert. We get heads on the crushing hammer, so he doesn't get that one energy. Nothing decent here, so we go for the chip chip, and all he had were fairy energies, and I was like, Lord, I really wanted to stall him from getting even that one energy. Uh, but we could do it, could not do it. We finally get Elm's Lecture here, a little late. And I'm like, I want some of those cards back. <laughs> oh, got the hiccups. So this would have been monstrous into a GX deck of some sort. He had like the right item set up and everything. He does get the fairy song here. This is what I really wanted to st stall. Um, but yeah, he does get the fairy song. So we crushing hammer one energy off that second guardian, uh, and that's super annoying because we're just not let, letting him get into three energies here, no matter what. And there was a victory. Uh, he just couldn't handle it. The stall was too heavy. Uh, okay, let's get into game three, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are playing game number three with the Pidgeotto stall deck. Um, let's see. Okay, so we're playing this into um, like the Grass Skill deck with like Celebi, Venusaur, um, Shaman, uh, Executor, things like that, basically. <clears throat> Um, at least that's what I thought it was. He slightly ran it different. I think he ran Welder in this. To, like, accelerate energy onto his Venusaur or something, which is a pretty good idea. Because you need two Grass Energies and two Fire on him, and if you get two Fire and a Grass, um, you can basically use Pollen Hazard. Turn two. And that's pretty good. Not a bad idea, but running dual energies is kind of inconsistent. So he gets the double Shaman out, but it really doesn't phase us because we're not really planning to do uh, any damage to this Venusaur. Not even with our Kuno, because we need three attacks with Kuno, and that's just not going to happen if he's able to attack us. So, um, yep. Um, also, I could have played Kuno first and put the energy on him to Cold Crush, but um, I didn't want him to get two prize cards off of like burning 
um, confusing poisoning and then us not being able to do anything. So yeah, I uh, decided to play it safe and just give up the giraffe rig instead. We get our Pidgey set up out, and then we uh, gear into another elm, which is great. That's what you're gonna be. What that's what you're gonna be looking for most of the time with this deck. Um, so we are trying to discard cards from his deck that like to the loss zone, basically. Um, ideally, you'd want to do things like energies, uh, like things you can get back, basically, and that's mostly energies. Uh, but. Let's move ahead a little bit here, so we get to turn two. Uh, he gets two energies on his Venusaur. We go for the Elms for the triple uh, Pidgey Odo here. So I'm playing as fast as possible here because I want to like time manage. That's why you see all these Rapido movements going through. Um, yeah, I just want to like select. Play it quickly get my turn done I'm thinking where I have to but otherwise like the, the other motions are pretty quick because I don't want to lose out uh, on time here which is possible with this deck um, if you run into a troublesome deck nice so we run into we discard the other crushing hammer which is kind of an out tree uh, here because we'd like to have both but unfortunately we get one and we also get tails with it uh, doesn't really do anything great for us so I'm like okay well I could have retreated or got one more get lost so whatever I'll, I'll do that to no effect because um, either way we lose the water energy if it were recycle energy I definitely would have retreated uh, and then gone for Rangaroo but then we might need a Rangaroo to get some of these things back so I didn't want to get like Pollen Hazarded uh, next turn, and I didn't realize he was running Walder in here until he did that, but as you can see, pretty useless Walder there, like I guess he got one extra energy, but if he had two in the beginning, uh, it would have sped him up a turn and then he would have uh, been able to do more damage. But yeah, that's the dual energy losses, man, when you try to run Walder with grass type Pokemon, but yeah, you're gonna burn that poor thing when you Walder onto it. Uh, I was doing something else here, that's why these things, like if it gets hovered on the screen, it gets stuck. Uh, probably like building a deck or something on the side while I'm playing this. Um, so yeah. Bop, bop, bop. Let's get back into it. Let's start drawing. Uh, we get Chip Chip Pisex or and Reset Stamp. And he already has like six cards. So we go for the Reset Stamp here immediately. What we're really looking for is Crushing Hammers. But I don't know how many of them we have left. in the deck. We do draw into all three um, water energies here, which is pretty nice. So I'm like, we need to get rid of uh, the energies on this Venus store right now. And we don't have any crushing hammers yet, so um, I was like, alright, so uh, we do get, get rid of a great potion, although it's not really concerned to us right now. Another card would have been nice, but uh, we're trying to work our way thinning out the deck uh, as much as possible here. Fortunately, we lose a, a Rangaroo. It would have been nice to get rid of the Pidgeotto or Giraffe against instead, but we lose a Rangaroo. Uh, worst case scenario. So, uh, I'm like, okay, Costume Catcher. Uh, I'm going to save that. Hopefully, I'm going to make sure he doesn't get a Welder. Oh, no, I, I gave him the Welder. Sorry, because I was like, okay, if you poke gears into a Cynthia or something, you get something useful. That could be a problem. Uh, since we're about to reset the energies in his hand, I was like, okay, uh, blah blah blah. I did a bunch of things here just to like get the deck going a little bit more. Um, retreat the giraffe rig, play the Articuno, cold crush. And that pretty much sends him back to square one here with the energies. Um, so he has to start all over again. I'm basically looking to buy myself time. Um, I did give him the welder, so if he has at least one more fire energy in his hand, I was like, okay, he's gonna welder for one. Worst case, welder for two. He'd still need a grass energy to start using pollen hazard again, so I was counting on that to buy me a turn, but I think he just basically didn't have um, any more energies left, and he was like, boom. Um, yeah, it's because it's inconsistent, right? Trying to get uh, both, um, like, basically, like, um, grass and fire energies onto. Uh, grass Pokemon, or just like two 
linear, uh, non-linear, or two, two energy streams onto, like, one linear energy stream Pokemon. Anyway, um, that's the thing. That's game number three. Let's get into game number four here. Alright, we are back with game number four of the, uh, Pidgeotto stall. So, uh, let's see what we do. Okay. So, we are playing into a mixed deck of some sort. This is, like, um... It's like a Mew Mew box, but it has some odd uh, cards in it. That's what I would have to say. Definitely some odd cards. I think. Oh, this was a this was one of the longer games too. So let's uh, skip ahead on all those turns. Uh, so we do get the three Pidgeotto out. He has Gengar Mimikyu. So I'm trying to thin my hand of uh, as many supporters as I can so we don't. And I know he's going to find a way to horror house me. So he goes for uh, Steven. So we get an extra turn here. Because uh, he didn't immediately get to um, put an energy out. So that Steven's is super useful for him. So we go for Pidgey Pidgey. Uh, and I look what else to get. And I'm like, I'll get another Pidgey. I uh, have something to sacrifice just in case. I didn't play it out though. Uh, which might have been expensive for me. Uh, so he does go for the rare candy, get to his Swampert, um, and this has the ability power draw, so if you discard a card from your hand, uh, you can basically draw three cards. Um, and he does get the rainbow energy, which, which we pre probably got with the Stevens, um, so it was basically what he got was Swampert, rare candy, and the rainbow energy. Um, now he uses Horror House, um, GX, so we can't, uh, use any cards from our turn. Uh, next, or from our hand next turn, and that basically means that Girafferig is uh, a goner. He gets Giratina Garchomp out, and I'm like, oof, uh, feels bad. I should have, um, I should have, what, uh, gotten the Bench Mew is what I'm thinking, because if he has a Rainbow Energy, uh, he can just start chipping away at our, at our Pidgeotto line. And I'm like, oops, uh, didn't expect that coming out. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, this deck was all sorts of crazy, so I didn't know what I was playing into. Uh, pretty much had to figure it out. Um, so let's go a little more ahead here. Um, oops, may have gone too far. So he does, uh, he does get the Poltergeist off, um, and that does basically take out our Girafferig. Feels bad. Rest in peace, friend. Um, you're a good one. Okay, so then we go for Young Pidgey here. Uh, Brave Bird, it's your turn, and then basically we have a Crushing Hammer, so I'm confident. I'm like, okay, so unless he has two energies in a row, can't Polter Poltergeist says. Uh, if he's running Mew Mew in case, because that's what I thought this deck was initially, I'm like, why would you not have Mew Mew in here? Um, so I decided to take out the Rainbow Energy, because it's all sorts of energy. I, I know it doesn't really matter uh, in this case, but I just wanted to get rid of that and be done with it. Um, he did have the Porygon on the bench, so I'm like, okay, so if he has a Porygon Z in there, that might be a problem, because... Really what I thought this deck was, was like, four, um, rainbow energy, and then basically, uh, a combination of special energies, which were either, like, special energy fairy lightning psychic, and the other one, like, special energy, um, fighting, oh, I think it's the same one, so I might be running eight energies total, and just those cards, or something like that, something like that, because I didn't see any, any other energies in there except rainbow and the special energy set, so it's an interesting deck. Um, for sure. I think it's more reliant on, like, uh, getting that Porygon Z out, and then, like, how do you get special energies into your hand is the next question. So you'd probably have to Stevens for them, um, and then draw three each turn and then attach them, like, how you want, I guess. That's the only- because there's no cards to actually, um, draw out special energies for you in the game. Um, you know, you need, like, cards that can get you any card, basically. Like, uh, the Evolve Lens of Cog or Stevens of Evolve or something like that. But um, again, if you play Stevens and you don't get the uh, the full turn because your turn ends as soon as you play Stevens, so I mean after you finish the effect of Stevens, but yeah, uh, that's what I meant. So we do get to take Liza, uh, go for the switch here, uh, Young Rangarus uh, coming in. I'm really hoping that he doesn't get another energy because uh, if he does, Rangarus is going down. Uh, we decided to resource manage. I need more crushing hammer, so yeah, I'm gonna grab these three. Um, like, those are the... Crushing Hammer and Ship Ship Ice Axe is, like, the base, like, the bread and butter and items for this deck. Because um, that's what really keeps your opponent uh, under check and, and from taking prize cards. So he did draw into another energy. Um, like, okay, at least we got that one important um, resource management off um, and saved our Pidgeys from, from a horrible, horrible grave. So, Oranguru, that was a brave sacrifice, my man. 
did well. You did well. A lot of people taking one for the team in this deck. Alright, so let's skip ahead. Our friend uses a red challenge. Uh, takes out a Rangaroo. Poltergeist obviously is going down. Uh, we go for the airmail here. Uh, Le Young reset stamp. I'm like, yes, I am definitely going to stamp you. Um, we got Bench Mew. We have a Rangaroo. So the setup is like still pretty, pretty decently good here. Um, Like, nice to have that, like, poor Pidgey draw power. I don't know how long we're gonna have it, but it's just, like, the one turn. So, I make a real effort here. I grab his Swampert, because that's, like, the Pokemon that's gonna do the least damage. It requires the most amount of energy, and also has the three energy retreat cost. So, I'm like, okay, so no Crushing Hammer. Uh, at least I get to pull your Swamper out um, and stall you like this. I pick this route and then we go reset stamp, boom. Now you don't have resources and you draw four cards, good luck. Um, and basically that was our turn. I, I didn't want to play Surge because we didn't really have anything else to do. And then, uh, I don't know if I retreated the Pidgey here into the Rangaroo or I just let him have it in case he had a switch. Because um, honestly we need the other Rangaroo to like, start getting some of these things back. Um, so I was like, okay, let me grab a Mars and grab Liza Tate. Liza Tate is also super useful in this deck. Like, all the resources in this deck are so good. Uh, for their, like, versatility and, like, just what they do for you. Crushing Hammer uh, into Chip Chip Ice Axe can just stall your opponent for days. Um, like, denying the right energies in, in certain decks, denying energies at all. Uh, denying things like rare candies. Oh my god, there's so many options. Like, for, for decks that are reliant on, like, triple acceleration energy, you can just deny them that the whole time, and they wouldn't even be able to attack. So he does draw into the switch here, which is, like, um, with Red's challenge, so that's super lucky for him. Pretty much the only reason why I didn't give up the Orangaroo, or, yeah, the, why I didn't switch the Pidgey into Orangaroo, because, um, you know, the, if we run out of Orangaroos and we can't resource them, then we're done. So, we need to make sure we have that stream of uh, infinite crushing hammers and, and things. So there's a crushing hammer. Super happy with that. We get it. We'll obviously knock off the ring, but... Oh, we get the... Uh, I think I looked for um, the other crushing hatcher here, but there's only three. So I put it back. Like, there's two in the discard. We'll get that later. We need more... Um, Things for Poke Gear, we grab Eliza Tate. What happens if you use Surge on Surge? That's my question. Does it let you play... I guess you'd be wasting one for the first Surge. And then you'd get to play one more or would you get to play three more after that now two more right including this card so three more play surge she should get three after that the second one is the other surge and then you get two more cards after that but you should have gotten three for the first one do you, do you do you get to play two surges plus three trainers or does it not stack like that i'm curious we should try that one again I'm just curious if the first Surge's effect gets overridden and the third card you play becomes the last card for the first Surge and the first card for the second Surge. I don't know if you guys followed that train of thought. Uh, if somebody knows that, put it in the comments for me. I'd love to have an answer to that question. So if you play Lieutenant Surge and then the second card you play is Lieutenant Surge again, do you get three cards after that, or if you, play, if you play Lieutenant Surge and then you play a supporter card and then you play Lieutenant Surge, now do you get two more after that and that's how you get uh, to play three supporters plus the two Surge? I don't know, I think it 
I think the second one is more reasonable. Playing Surge, right, and then a supporter card, and then Surge, and then two more supporter cards. Would be how you get like a bunch of supporter cards in play. That one sounds like the least likely to fail. I think if you played Surge, Surge, then you'd only get two more because the first one may become. Well, no, you, well the second Surge would still have to give you two. So yeah. You know, you may only get two like that if you play Surge Surge, but then Surge Supporter Card Surge. Uh, okay, anyway, we reset Stamp him. Uh, we're recycling what we need. He's in a pretty bad spot here. Uh, no energies on his Gengar. Uh, no way to basically escape that. Our friend is smiling here, I don't know what he has. Uh, but basically we get to resource manage some more things back in here. Uh, I look for custom catchers basically here because that's I, that's what I know is like, going to be the most bothersome thing for him. He does judge us, uh, draw some cards. Bob, move ahead here. Uh, basically, the stall continues. We just look for cards. Uh, that's it guys, stalls are very, very long games, that's why I probably, um, yeah, that's why I literally tried to pick the most interesting games out of them for you guys, and even this is a stall -y like game, so yeah, um, this is how it works, you just keep going back and forth with the recycle, uh, I think we do lose this Oranguru here, we chip chip ice axe, we just keep going, we just keep going, crushing hammer and chip chip ice axe and a crushing hammer, uh, force our opponent to draw and draw and draw and draw and burn all his resources. Uh, we get the double custom catch. He pulls out his Swampert. He uses Porygon Z to get three energies onto him uh, because that's how he needs to retreat or even attack at all. And at this point, pretty sure he's burned most of his uh, energies and special energies. I think he, he may have had 12 in here total, um, it looks like. But yeah. Uh, I didn't want to stamp him here. That's because uh, I didn't want him to like be able to draw out. We finally do go for the Articuno Cold Crush <laughs> uh, to get rid of his last three energies and last hope of doing anything to us this game. He got close, so he got the two prize cards. Uh, we'll give him that. Did really well to get like make use of the Swamper, even though. Um, but he did get the right energies on the right time. I think he drew into them with his prizes or something. Uh, and also the power draw I've returned. But the power draw is also what cost him the game early here. Um, because rapidly drawing into his cards eventually resulted in basically the deck outage. So, we go for Chip Chip Ice Axe here. <laughs> don't know how much we need that. We don't even need the Crushing Hammers. Although, if we did, they were ready. Um, for us next turn, we don't want to give him a Tate and Liza. Because that will let him shuffle his hand back in the deck. So, boom. That's it. That completes the game. Um, and pretty much... We go Cold Crush. Uh, discard three beautiful energies out onto there and uh, now he draws and then he power draws which is like a terrible idea <laughs> i guess he just didn't have anything else to do I, oh he stevens was the was the bad part bad idea on that stevens when you only have four cards left in your deck um so here's the stall complete guys he's gonna draw his last card out next turn uh we do not want to reset stamp him we basically don't want to do anything here we can just sit tight uh, on our hand, pretty much. Alright. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I think I just, like, clear my hand out, play Mars. Um, and he basically uh, drew out his hand. Uh, the last card there. It's all complete. Two cards left to six. Um, so that's how you play this deck, guys. Long games, uh, but really fun games uh, when you're playing them because it makes you think. Uh, makes you think of the strategy, makes you think of which cards you have to play, which cards you have to not play, uh, which cards you have to discard, which cards you have to recycle. But uh, here it is, guys. Pidgeotto Stall, Isaiah Williams, 8th place, 2019 TCG, uh, worldwide winning deck. Uh, there it is for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe for more great Pokemon TCGO content. This is your favorite, Dr. Professor Oak, signing off. Have a good day, good night, wherever you are.